idea of having an art project on the roof of the chancel here came about because of the extensive works that we're doing to the inside of the church, which involved scaffolding right to the roof. And once that scaffolding got up there, people in the church began to look up and think, hey, maybe this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to, you know, really leave our mark here. And uh, we realized that we needed an artist that could pull that project together. And everybody knew there was only one person in our midst, really, which is my good friend Rob here, uh, who could, you know, lead the project, not just by doing it himself, but by drawing in all the people of the church, young and old alike, to uh, all have a go. In, in producing this lovely work of art. After Dave approached me about doing something on the ceiling, I spent time in the church looking around, trying to work out from a practical point of view how we could do this. And to my relief, looked up at the chancel ceiling and saw that it was gridded into 40 panels. I measured the panels up and that gave me the freedom to be able to do it on the floor, which meant I could involve the whole community. Once the community is involved, I had to make a design that was simple enough so that I could get anybody from a two-year-old to an 80-year-old to be able to paint something and therefore the design of a tree came about where the branches reach out to all the different panels and then on each panel are leaves which were painted by everybody in the church. I was well aware of the fact that Rob, like most artists, works uh, in a solitary way in his studio and uh, I knew that this was going to pose a new challenge to him to be able to draw together a whole community of people and, and I guess that involves releasing quite a bit of control really. It, and it was quite a challenge to be able to do something that was good and have the gravitas of being within the chancel, that for it to be inclusive. But um, in the end, I think it's worked really well. You know, everyone's going to come together, everyone's been very enthusiastic. And I think it's a very positive, beautiful piece. The thing that's really special about these leaves is that on the leaves we should put the names of people in the church, and not just the people in the church now, but people who've been in the church over the last sort of 20 or 30 years, which is the present sort of life of the church. And then to say to people, who else would you like up there? You know, maybe relatives, alive or dead, or maybe inspirational figures in the world who uh, actually can, can go from, you know, a, a famous footballer to uh, Nelson Mandela, a whole range of people that are up there. And I think their names can't be seen from down below, but we all know they're up there and we've got a record of them. And it's just this feeling of, you know, a whole communion of saints that are sort of gathered around here in the church, uh, underneath of which is the altar where we celebrate the Eucharist. I knew all along that the middle panel was pivotal to the whole piece. I actually finished everything else and installed it before finally coming up with the design. All the branches lead to this point. It was really important that the symbol in the middle of the trunk represented St Luke's as a community and also the philosophy of St Luke's. And so we came up with the hairs. Yeah, and we'd, we'd felt all along that the centrepiece needed to have in some way a symbol of God there, uh, that the God was at the centre of this community, but we didn't want it to be obvious or preachy. Uh, and so we wanted something that was a little bit kind of idiosyncratic, a bit, a bit strange really. And this symbol of the three hairs came, which is a, is a very old symbol from actually lots of religions, not just Christianity and Buddhism and Islam, it's found there in the past. And also in churches, oddly enough, only in Devon in this country, but also in France and Germany. And really, it's these three hairs sort of symbolising God, because each of them appears to have two ears, and yet actually they're all sharing an ear. So they're sort of joined, in a sense, by their ears, which is a really fantastic sort of idea. But it's sort of communicating this notion in a mystical way of interdependence which is not only true of, of our understanding of God but our understanding of us as a community too that we are all joined together we need each other and yet we also have our independence as well